But nobody talks about this other thing. And this is where I've been key in trying to emphasize plasticity, plastogen, something that generates plasticity. And so that's what these are. And there are two flavors. Psychoplastogens, which we've just been talking about, agents that induce neuroplasticity and one of the subjective states, you can narrowly define it as psychotomimetic, but you could say dissociation and empathogens, however you wish. But they also have neuroplasticity. And those are other called neuroplastogens, agents that do one without the other. I think we already have several examples of neuroplastogens that don't cause subjective mental changes, but do cause rapid onset neuroplasticity. One of them is Zoranolone, just approved for postpartum depression, might make you a little sedated, but it doesn't really make you crazy. The other is the Avelity, called the dextromethorphan combined with a bupropion. That doesn't do it. But uh, some of the other ones, of course, do. So this is the debate. Someday we'll know whether there's a truth to, somebody wins this debate, but right now it's still in progress. Psychedelics are plastogens, um, which is a chemical that promotes rapid and prolonged structural and functional changes. It's, I think, and others, and I think Roger does, um, uh, it's thought to be one of the underlying neurobiological mechanisms behind the therapeutic benefits of psychedelics. Did you know that your SSRIs are also slow onset plastogens? They increase brain trophic factors like BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. BDNF. And so the question is, is that how they work? And there's also a hypothesis that when the SSRIs work, they do this, might take four to six weeks. When they don't work, they don't do this for whatever reason. Also, when the so-called psychedelics work, they're doing this. And interestingly enough, it doesn't take four to 12 weeks. It takes four to 12 minutes. Wow. Is and, and about the same time that they have a subjective mental effect, including improved antidepressant effects, is the same time the plasticity occurs. You can literally make a synapse that fast. And all of you who are actually learning something in this room are proving that yourself. Because the provocative stimulation coming to you from the stage <laughs> will make you secrete your own BDNF and make your own synaptogenesis. Experiences do this. Running does this. Jogging, exercise. This is probably a good thing to constantly be restructuring and making your brain. So psychedelics, whether it's DOI, which is an experimental one, DMT I told you about, and LSD, they all will cause that bottom, see, see the one on the left, it's this vehicle, that stringy little thing? Look how more complicated, more complicated, more complicated it gets on the bottom. Those are not new neurons, it's not neurogenesis, although there may be some of that, it's synaptogenesis, connections. And this is another way to measure it, a little fancier. So if you look at uh, the first one, it says number of branches, the other one says number of primary dendrites, then the total dendritic length, the, the length of uh, the longest dendrite, all those things are going up compared to vehicle with DOI, DMT, and LSD. And the other thing it does, it makes a behavior. We think that those things I just showed you here are a proxy for the therapeutic effects and the new plasticity of the psychedelic drugs, and there is a proxy for the hallucinations, which is this thing called a head twitch response. So if you're a mouse or a rat, and you take a drug, which is either LSD, but they tend to use a drug called DOI, there's a head twitch. And we think that the head twitch is a proxy for the bad parts or the hallucinogenic parts of these agents. So if you knock out the 5-HT2A receptors, you don't get this anymore, uh, and an antagonist actually blocks it. So it looks like you get both, and we think that they are different signal transduction pathways. You get one pathway for head twitch hallucinations in humans, and another pathway for synaptoplasticity. So the psychedelic-induced 
plasticity is thought to go through the 5-HT2A receptor, at least some of them some ways, and some downstream activation of at least some signal, we don't know which one it is yet, and it changes calcium downstream, like uh, mammalian uh, target of rapamycin mTOR, and it makes you grow synapses and spines. <coughs> And you can show this in experimental animal models and with those things, in 20 minutes, two hours, four hours, you're already making synapses. Very cool. This is a more complicated way of doing it. <coughs> Excuse me, which shows that you can have not only the head twitch response, but the synaptogenesis, that's what this thing shows, at the same time in animal models. And so the question is, could you ever make a new drug that gave you the synaptogenesis without the head twitch? And the answer appears to be yes. Those are in trials right now. <laughs>